Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we talked to both of the people in the detention center, both Adrian Andrews and Matt Ungard. Both of them are hiding stuff from us, as evident by their psyche locks, and now we're just kind of stuck here. No one's really telling us anything, we have sort of a an idea of the full picture, but not the full picture itself. And so we don't really have anything else to do but go back home. Mr. Nick, your phone! I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. I wanted to let the ringtone play out for a little bit because first of all, it's an absolute jam. And second of all, I love that Phoenix has made the Steel Samurai's theme his ringtone for his phone. It sounds kind of ominous. It's probably just your imagination. You should really pick it up, Mr. Nick. It could be important. Hello? We've got a big problem, pal! What's wrong? I'm on my way to your office now! Okay. Hey, wait a sec. Why is he coming here? It's terrible! I don't know what to say, pal! It's the end, I say, and- Oh, I got here faster than I thought. Um, hey. No time to relax now, pal! I'm confused as anything- Here. Well, what happened? We got him! We know who bought that spike here, bruh. Eh? This quickly? And this bear is what gave them away, pal. The bear. I figured that out, pal. I figured that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Um, wasn't that Mr. Edgeworth that figured- Shh, Pearls. And? Go on. There's only one person who bought one of those bears who's related to the crime. Who is it? Who would be so rude as to spy on another person in the room? Mad on guard. Huh? Mad on guard, your client. That's who, pal. And here I thought things couldn't get any worse. Are you sure you heard right? That the person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is the credit card receipt for the purchase. It's for $3,800, pal. It's an exact match to the price to the s of the stuffed bear. A receipt? That's all you have? Nah, it's not just the receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Ungod. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ungod's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm sure the person that bought the stuffed bear was Mr. Ungod himself. My... My sight is failing me. This can't be. So, what about the spy camera we found? Uh, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess you can- I can give these back to you for you to file away into evidence. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought- I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Carita's room was Matt on guard. Why- Why would Mr. On guard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Corita in one of their rendezvous. I bet is not good enough for me. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to see him? Mr. Wingard, I mean. Yes. I'm... I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder... I wonder what we will find out next. I'm scared myself. But I have to put on a good face for Pearls. Mad on guard. What in the world have you done? With all of this in our evidence, we have officially gotten everything we need to go up against Mad and Guard and his psyche locks. You're working really late, you know. It's already past 10 p.m., dude. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax, don't you know that ignorance is bliss? But if you really want to know, let's talk. All right, Matt, it's time for me to break your locks.
Now, let's hear what this secret of yours is. What if Mr. Karita had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I could keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but... I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on. I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Corita, especially on that night. You know that. Because of the spy camera. Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Corita's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? And then sent the images the camera took with this transmitter. Wow, but dude, where's this camera you're talking about hidden? Well, we know it was hidden in the stuffed bear. The spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Huh. I guess Juan had a few of those kinds of fans too, huh dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm. You sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corita was... Mr. Unguard. Don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met Mr. Bear before, dude. Aw, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. Unguard. If I didn't know how you work in court, I think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right dude? You're just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up on your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want... You want to show me first? Here's the proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Unguard. It's from when you bought that stuffed bear. Dude, all you could tell from this is that I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? This $3,800? This could be the toothbrush that I bought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? It's ivory, and it's got elephant hair for bristles. Yeah, elephant hair. Is that what rich people use nowadays? Anyway. The store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, so can I ask you one thing? Yes? You're my lawyer, right dude? So, if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked why you set the camera up yet. And what your secret is. Of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you gonna do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know because I must. The reason you hid this camera in Mr. Corita's room and filmed it in secret is... Adrian Andrews? There's a rumor going around that Mr. Andrews and Mr. Mr. Corita were having a secret meeting. You, who was keeping tabs on Mr. Corita, you were going to reveal that as, that as a fact and turn it into a scandal. Isn't that right? Dude, you could be such a moron. Huh? Oh man, Mr. Lawyer dude. That kind of scandal? That's the good stuff. That's what we in the industry industry call juicy. The good stuff? Juicy? Look, we could get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'd be the end, dude. Too bad. That wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? I wish your reason for spying was something so innocent, but it wasn't. You didn't spy on Mr. Corita because of Miss Andrews. Then there's only one reason I can think of for you to do such a thing. The real reason that you set up the camera in Mr. Corita's room was... Ooh, what is that card? Maybe he doesn't know about the card. This is a certain man's calling card. That man's name is Shelly DeKiller. I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Shelly, the killer? Th that's ridiculous. 
why would I know some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Um, this is it. I'm finally starting to get the, to the truth. I can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Madden Guard, I know why you know Mr. The Killer. It's because you're his client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client. That's why. You hired Shelly to kill her to assassinate Mr. Juan Corita. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is you, Matt on guard. <sighs> and here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought, anyway. M Mr. Engard, you really did hire- Hold on a sec, I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Consult? Myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's about time for you to meet him now, Mr. Lawyer Dude. How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt on guard. Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really... So you were Shelly the Killer's client? You don't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, do you? What do you mean? And that woman, Adrian Andrews, was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime on me. I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? That's... You're lying! What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on. Let us grown-ups talk about more... adult things. But... but why? Why did you hide the video camera and... A weak... A weakling soon believes the words of others. Just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Miss Andrews' secret? But I'm no weakling. I don't believe in anyone. Least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me, how much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And... and that's why... Yes, that's where the video comes in. I've, it's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay, and even blackmail him if I want. That's right, that video's my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up, and I can. Good enough of an answer for you, little girl. Why? Why would you kill Mr. Corita? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corita had been able to give it, then Mr. Rengard's secret would have... Ah, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really, but bit by bit it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... That's how Mr. Corita ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. But on a sweet, innocent face, and people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, how and how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone, all working their butts off for me. Mad on guard. Oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. 
How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you'd killed Juan Carita. And you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that to killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You... You... You killed Mr. Corita! <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Ugh. Aw, oh, but too bad. You can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Aw, oh, but you can't, can you? That will be the one thing you absolutely can't do. M Mystic Maya! You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word. Or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. You... You... Scoundrel! So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Esquire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I... I'll get you for this! That's such a cliché phrase. Juan said something like that, if memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how well things turned out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Maya. Maya. What am I supposed to do? And now. Now you finally found it. The starting line of this case. Edgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Well, right. what are you going to do? If you plan on changing your defense... N no We can't do that! That's right. He's holding my hostage. What? What should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeworth! Right. Only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My... turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer, and you must find it on your own. I'm a lawyer, but to fight for someone who is clearly a killer. Mad on guard. That man is really... Ugh! It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense in a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defense? But what exactly is that? Is that, where a, is that where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through some shouting and trickery? Ugh. <sighs> Ironic that you of all people would say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you fought for your clients up until now? Uh, well, that may be true, but... But that's... That's because I believed my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get on guard and acquittal, that... That isn't a proper defense at all! I became a lawyer because I thought... I thought I could save people who are suffering and in pain. But... When I look at this mess we're in... I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do! Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. You want to save someone? That's something easier said than, said than done, wouldn't you say? Th that's... You are a defense lawyer. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People like you and Francisca von Karma are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, and even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict. For a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francisca. She fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record. That's all. And? Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? 
because your precious win record was destroyed? You were so petty! I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you are mistaken. What do you- Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. Eh? I don't believe you. Are you saying that that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then- Why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith you will see it before the ver verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of this story. M Mr. Nick! The transceiver! I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Well then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my. What is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me. Please. Why are you holding by a hostage for Mr. Ungard's sake? Why are you... Why are you doing this for a cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't Mr. misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me! A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you were asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Y yeah That is what I like to call my aftercare. W what the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called a client relations, and it is part of my ass an assassin's duty. An assassin's... duty? We were unlucky this time that my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney, and to ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. W what is your name? I believe I told you once before. However... You did, but... My name is... De Killer. Shelley De Killer. Y you're Shelly the Killer? Please keep in mind you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a De Killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain... M Maya! It would be my duty as an assassin to see if she receives a nice long nap. Ah, uh, no! Now then, if you'll excuse me. If someone were to trace the signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! I... I don't know what to say. E Edgeworth! Hmm? Did you hear that? At, at the end of the transmission. Huh? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. A cat? It can't be. That cat. Can it? What is it? I think... I think I know where Shelley the Killer is holding Maya hostage. Edgeworth, have all police units head for Unguard Mansion immediately. All right, you hurry over as well then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Y yeah. Looks like something new is showing up by that door there. Maya! Please answer us, Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time, he was the killer. He and Ungard were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. Oh, it's a figurine of a bear! But there are a lot of cuts in it for some reason. A bear? Isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Corita? Why would something like this be here? Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. Ah, I'm sure that's for Shu. Do you think that this 
came through that little door? <clears throat> this door, it's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking down doors by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. Ugh, there's no one here. From the looks of this room, I would say that this is Ungod's private lounge. Look at this, right? An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals and a VCR. Check inside the deck. If there's a tape, it would be an important piece of evidence. If we're lucky, it'll have the moment the crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but... The tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No! But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took this tape we're holding, we're looking for, and escaped with it. We've searched all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. It looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now, we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route of this district. Le leave the rest to us. Maya. This looks like a picture of Miss Inpax, with love, Celeste. Miss Inpax? You mean... Yes, Mr. Corita's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Inpax be here in Mr. Rengard's mansion? Why does it say with love? Hmm, this might be a clue. Ah! What's wrong, Pearls? Please let me see that picture frame! Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back of the frame! Maya... It's Mystic Maya! She left us a message! W what? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You'd better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Ever! I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Pearly, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's got to watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. That's... I... No! Mystic Maya! <laughs> right. What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um, nothing. We've searched the house and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes? As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm going to get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? Miss- Miss Andrews' psyche lock. If I could just find out one- what secret she's holding then I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow to blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Um, thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I have come to remove your psyche lock. Psyche lock? I want to know, and you will tell me your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me, if you can. Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Ungard for the murder? I've already told you countless times, it's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it! I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Ungard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you're saying I was taking my revenge out on Matt, and that's why? What an absurd idea. I... I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews, 
A woman who lives by being dependent on another person. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Uh, Celeste. There's only one catalyst that could cause such a strong, such strong feelings, and even revenge. That is Miss Impact's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. Ungard... It would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impax and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? This. This is a photo of Miss Impax, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impax's handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's all right. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ungard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. Celeste. She was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Corita didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. But because of Mr. Rengard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at that time. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why... With Love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was... thrown away. That's so horrible! Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him. Even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. On the night one called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called off the wedding, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But... Then why did Mr. Corita have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when he was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impax. That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind, and in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds, and, so that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then, when Juan discovered her body, he hid her note. But, but why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt, and it would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge? There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... 
at the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it because I heard it all from Juan. It was so I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That's n that night, when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another, after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I'd even, bought, I'd even brought a lighter. But... I couldn't find the suicide note, and that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring to them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters, so when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright. Even knowing all this, are you still going to help that... man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with Maya's situation. Or with what I know now. <laughs>